So in this video I'm going to be changing out the CPU cooler on my main work computer for a Noctua NHD14. side off here. So right now the cooler in here is a Arctic Cooling Freezer 7 Pro Rev 2 if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this was installed oh, probably six or seven years ago. It's done an okay job. I recently put in a new six core processor and overclocked it to four gigahertz and basically I just want to get a little bit uh, lower CPU temperatures. That's why I'm doing this. At the moment, with the programs I run, the CPU temperature is going up to about the mid-70s, which isn't too bad, but I'd like to try and get it a little bit cooler. So to take this off, I need to remove the fan first. It should just pop off. And I will disconnect its cable to the motherboard. two screws on either side that need to come out. When I installed this initially, uh, I made a video, put it on YouTube, of how to do this. It's a fairly popular video. I think I still get uh, comments on it even today. I don't think this cooler is sold new anymore. They've got updated versions with different names and that connect to motherboards um, in newer ways. This one was kind of unusual at the time, the way it connects. So that should allow the cooler to come off. Whenever you're pulling off a cooler, it doesn't want to come off, give it a kind of a, a rotation back and forth while you pull, and that will get it loosened up. And I just put this back on like a, a couple of weeks ago, so the thermal compound is very fresh. All right, so next I need to take off that plate. And this is held in with a couple of, well, four pins that are down in these little holes. There's one. I'm just gripping it with some needle nose pliers and pulling. Two. Three. So now that plate should come out. And this cooler still does work. If it wasn't in a, a system with an overclock CPU, it would uh, cool just fine. I've got a friend that's trying to put together a new system on the cheap that uh, I think this will work for. All right, so the thermal compound, I'm gonna go ahead and clean off. I'm just gonna use a paper towel. I'm going to be putting on the same thermal compound, the same type, which is Arctic Silver 5. Trying to get the majority off. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right. Stand this up. All right, so unboxing of the Noctua D14. should have all the hardware for it. Okay. That's the bottom of it. This out. And I think this is just an empty box. Yeah, used for packaging. Okay. Turn that over. Get that box off. All 
I had already opened this and showed it to a client and pre-packed it so it right brand new out of the box it may not look exactly like this so to get it out I'm going to turn it upside down and then lift the box off which usually works fairly well oh this comes apart too there it goes so it comes with a cap over the plate where it connects to the CPU and you generally want to leave that on until you're actually ready to put it on the motherboard and the CPU. So I'm just going to set that over there and let's look at the hardware that comes with it. Common parts. Looks like a manual. Stuff for Intel processor and AMD. Now AMD I'm not going to be using. Need the Intel stuff. So it comes with a screwdriver, which is nice. So these are the common parts and this is the Intel specific stuff. Get this open. give you a case badge. I never put those on. That's a Y adapter. That, I think that's for reducing the fan speed. And I think that one is as well. So you can make it a little bit quieter if you connect this between the fans and the, uh, the motherboard. Uh, some fan mounting screws it looks like. And that's another way to mount fans with rubber to reduce vibration. So they give you some thermal compound, but I think I'll use the Arctic uh, Silver 5 I've got. All right, so let's look at the Intel stuff. All right, so that's the back plate. And a couple of bars, and then bolts, nuts, and spacers. So I think we're using all of this. I took a look at the manual online before I started this, and I believe this is all the stuff that we need. With the addition of, uh, I'm going to use this to connect. Since it has two fans, I'm going to plug one in there, one in there, and then that into the motherboard so they share a motherboard uh, fan header. Before I go take anything more apart, let's look at the manual. So we got an AMD manual and a Intel manual. Don't need the AMD. Okay, front and back. So this is the start. Step one, so it goes over the parts that you're going to be installing and the steps. And this looks like the same as the online manual, which is great. Um, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I installed a um, the newer version of this, the NHD15, onto a client's computer. And the directions that came in the box were not complete. I left out some, some key important information. So we had to go to the website to get the, the full manual, but this is good. All the directions are included here. Great. All right. So yeah, this is the, the DH, I'm sorry, the NHD14, and this is compatible with socket 1366, socket 1156, and socket 775. And those are older CPUs. The NHD15, supports all the latest CPUs from Intel and um, AMD. Although I don't know it supports the AMD AM4 CPU, which is coming out soon. Okay, so step one is to remove the motherboard. And I'm not going to do that because I don't need to. 
on this case, it's got a cutout on the case that gives access to the back of the motherboard. So I'm going to spin this around and take the other side of the case off. Right, so this is the back of the motherboard and the back plate will go just like that. So no reason to take the motherboard out of this case, which is great. The pain. All right. So let's see. And the directions say on socket 1366, which is what I have, and LGA 1156, the supplied back plate will install over the main board stock back plate, so the main board stock plate must not be taken off. Not that I could take this off if I tried. That is the, uh, the standard back plate that comes with, uh, with the motherboard, so I'm not taking that off. All right, setting up the back plate. So this is the back plate, and it's labeled A, B, and C. And A is for th socket 1366. So what I need to do is take this bolt and put it through the A location around the corners. Just like that. And just below it says to make sure you actually put it down into the track. If you have it like that, it won't seat properly. So, down in the track. Next up on the directions, for LGA 1366 and 1156, you need to remove the rubber inlay. So that's this right here. This is just for if you have socket 775. Do not need that. So next up is attaching the back plate. And that really is just getting the bolts to go through the holes in the motherboard. Just like that. And the next thing is if you have socket 1156, which I don't, need to make sure that the two cutouts, these two right here, are aligned with screws on the main board's back plate. So apparently on a socket 1156, there are two screws somewhere along there that these little cutouts need to go over. All right, next up is installing the mounting bars. So I need to be on the other side and putting these onto the bolts. It's turned around. All right, so these spacers need to go onto the bolts. So I'm going to try and lay this back so the, the camera can pick up what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm holding the back plate because gravity will make it fall out if I don't. Gravity, gravity or me pushing on it. So I'm just going to go around and put on these spacers. Like that. And next up is putting on the mounting bars, which is these two guys right here. So those just go right over the bolts. And next up is a uh, orientation option. So I can either have the cooler, let me see, lay this back. I can either have the cooler blowing the air to the back or up, depending on the orientation I put these bars in. So I'm going to do a more standard orientation and have the air blowing out the back. Although I could have it blow out the top since I do have a fan up there and it is open. Alright, so for orientation A with it blowing toward the back, I need to put the bars across the top like this.
And as I'm putting this on, I'm putting the bars through the outermost holes, which is for the 1366. There's also a notice on the manual to make sure when you're putting these on that the curved part goes toward the outside. If you put it the other way, uh, it won't align properly. Okay, so I'm just going to hold that in and let go for a minute. Okay. All right. So next up is to put on the, the thumb screws. So I'm going to reach around the back so I can lay this like that and hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So these just go onto the bolts and I'm just going to get them started at first. Okay, so now I'm going to finger tighten them. Fairly tight, just by finger. I'm just going back and forth and making sure they're all going down evenly. Like that. Okay. So now, since that's pretty well attached, what I can do is lay down the case. Okay. So tighten the screws until they stop with a screwdriver. Whenever you're doing this, when it comes to tightening things down, always defer to the manual. It's going to go back and forth each side until they stop. Stopped. Stopped. Okay, now I'll do the bottom parts. Stopped. And stopped. Okay. Uh, let's see. So thermal paste is up next. And I'm going to use my Arctic Silver 5. And the directions say to put a, I think a four to five millimeter dot in the middle. I describe it as a, about a size of a pea. Something like that. Okay. The next step is to take off the center fan, which you just kind of pull there and that pops off. And then do the same thing on the other side. Just a little bracket. So that should allow the center fan to come out. It's in there tight. Okay. And its cable needs to come out. Alright, so center fan's out. And the next step is to take the cap off. Very important. If you leave that on your cooling will not be good at all, and uh, plastic will melt, and you'll have a big mess. Okay. So the fans will be blowing that direction. And I can verify that if I look on the fans, just about all fans. I don't know that this is going to show up on video. Uh, it might. There are usually little embossed arrows that tell you the rotation direction. Also, there's an arrow that points in the direction of the airflow. So I want to have that pointing toward the back of the case. Now when I set this down, I want the fan's cable going that direction. And 
I basically just want to set this on the center. And what's happening here is these screws down here on either side will be going into this little screw post on either side of the bracket. So just generally get it lined up to the center. Looks like I'm going to have trouble with the height of my RAM. Okay, so a little bit of an issue. I should be able to work around it. Three of the RAM sticks are extra tall, so the fan's going to get in the way. What I'm going to do is just temporarily take this off, and when I put it back on, this fan, I'll just mount it a little bit higher. Okay, let's try that again. Generally, in the middle is what you want to try and do. Yeah, so the cooler itself uh, is not going to be touching the RAM. I'll just have to make an adjustment to the position of this uh, outside fan. Not a big deal. Okay. So they give you a screwdriver, but I'm going to try and use my usual screwdriver. And to begin with, what you want to do is get the screws on both sides started into the hole. It's very often difficult to, to feel. So I don't think they're going in. Whenever they start, the screws won't be as floppy. See, that's not floppy anymore. So I've got it just barely started. I'm coming back over here, pushing down, and getting this one started. There we go. So they're not floppy anymore. Hopefully that's showing up on the camera. I can't see. Okay, so from there what you do is you just count the number of times you screw it in. And do the same on either side. You want to get this tightened down approximately the same amount on either side until it's all the way down. I'm basically counting to eight, eight turns. That got tightened down. And that's tight. Okay, good. Now the fans. When I put these back on, I do need to make sure that they're going in the right direction. So that way I can tell by the arrow which is going that way, which may or may not be showing up on the video. But I'm going to do that so that the fan Fan's cable is down that way. Okay. So I'm just going to stick this back down through the middle. Oh, wait a minute. I'm putting the wrong fan in the wrong location. The other thing about this cooler is one of the fans is a little bit smaller than the other. I want to be putting the larger fan here. So this is a 120 millimeter fan, whereas this is a 140 millimeter fan. Basically, the, the same rule applies. You need to locate the arrow, which shows the direction, and make sure that arrow is going in the right direction. You just want the, want the airflow going towards the back of the case. So this just kind of goes in until it stops. It's sitting down at the bottom of the, the cooler. And you just take the, the clip over with your finger, just so it's on there. All right. Now the other. Same deal. Find the arrows that show the direction. Arrow going that way. Now this will need to be sitting on top of the ram. So I'm just going to put it pretty close and bump it up very slightly just so it's not actually touching the ram. That might make some vibration that produces noise if I did that, if I let it touch. 
Okay, and the other thing is to make sure your case side is going to go on. Yeah, I've got a good three quarters of an inch clearance there. All right, so the two fan cables. Let's see. Let's look at the directions for the cables. All right. So it's talking about them here. The blue one is the low nose adapter for the 120 millimeter, and the black one is the one for the 140 millimeter fan. I'm not going to use either of these. Um, I'm going to let the fan run at its usual speed, and then in the BIOS I can go in and uh, control the, the speed of the fan if I want it to be a little bit slower. Okay. But in order for both of these to run off the same fan header, I am going to use this little Y adapter. Okay. I'm just going to get back here. There's no way this is going to show up on the video. It's kind of cramped back here. But I'm plugging this into a fan header. It only goes on one way. It's got a little piece of plastic that keeps you from putting it on backwards. Just want to make sure it goes down and connects to the motherboard. What I'm doing is I'm kind of holding it from the far away portion, getting it essentially in the right spot, which you might be able to see that. I'm going to use a spudger to reach in and push it down. There it goes. All right, now the cables, just so they're out of the way of fans, I'm just going to take them and put them underneath the heat sink. Basically just get them out of the way. Yeah, nice and hidden so they're not reaching up and touching any of the fans. Yeah, looks good. All right, so let's stand this back up and put the case sides back on. See, this is the back side. Go ahead and get the front on. Okay, so I'll get this reconnected. Okay, so I've got it reconnected and it's back in Windows. I'm going to run CPU-Z and real temp. Real temp shows the temperatures. CPU-Z shows more of the uh, information about the processor. So just with a computer sitting doing nothing in particular, idling. Uh, the temperatures are in the low 30s for the most part, mid 30s, depending on what the CPU is doing here where it says load. The computer is actually doing a few things. I'm going to press Control shift escape to bring up the task manager and see what's using the CPU. So my screen recorder is using some. Carbonite's running um, and a few other things have asked. Okay, but uh, not too much. I would call this idle. So low to mid 30s Celsius. I'm going to run Prime 95 on the small FFT setting. So that's started up. Load is now 100% and the temperatures are in the mid 60s right now. I'm going to let this run for about 15 or 20 minutes and see what the temperatures get up to. Right, so I had to step away from the computer, so it ran a little bit longer than I was anticipating. It's at around 44 minutes in, and the CPU temperatures are in the mid to maybe slightly upper 70s, but mostly looks like mid 70s. Now, before I did this upgrade, 
I ran this same test with the same settings while the Freezer 7 Pro Rev 2 was installed and the temperatures were right around 90 degrees Celsius. So that's about a 15 degree Celsius drop in CPU temperatures and that's what I was hoping for. So that's how you install a Noctua NHD14 onto an Intel CPU and motherboard. Thanks for watching.